Welcome back to Zach Collect Stuff. Sometimes you stumble across estate sales, yard sales, antique stores that are just kind of good and maybe too good to be true. And this weekend might have been one of those. So I found it on estatesales.net on Thursday, but they don't typically post the addresses for the estate sales until the day before the sale. So I checked back on Friday and it was in the town that I live in or near the town that I live in. Said it started at nine o'clock. We got there right around 9.05. What drew me into this listing was that it said collector's paradise and it was um, hundreds of pictures of just different types of collectibles. And I saw a tote of sports cards. And so that's kind of what drew me into this sale. Now, what happens after that is kind of just a bunch of different stuff. The first day of the sale, I'm able to kind of walk in there, go down to the sports cards. Nobody's really looking through the sports cards yet. And I kind of had my, my pick of the sports cards that I wanted to get. Great prices. I got this big old box here for 40 bucks. That'll be a couple different videos. I made an effort to say, I'm gonna go back tomorrow if I have time. And so Sunday after church was done, after we'd eaten lunch, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna buzz over to that sale and see if they have anything left from the, from the sale. And typically estate sales have half off on the second day of the sale. And so the first thing I found was this bin. And this bin is just full of different types of patches. Um, there's a lot of like scouts patches in here. Uh, there's a lot of bowling patches. There's a lot of location patches. And I'm going to go through a lot of these. Um, but I was, I've was i always kind of liked patches. I asked how much for the whole bin. They said $10 for the whole bin of patches. Sure thing. That gets the money flowing. Um, and then Friday or Saturday when I was at the sale, I saw this picture. If you watched my short, you've seen this picture up close. Um, it's a World War I regiment photo. And... Uh, it, they had 40 bucks marked on it on on Saturday and so I was like you know what if it's still there on the second day of the sale and if it's out if it's um, discounted I might pick it up and so I went back and it was still there the guy that I had talked to about it the day before he was excited to talk about it again and so I was able to get it for $15 in the second day of the sale now what I'm gonna do for the rest of this video is go in depth on the patches and the comics that I was able to pick up. I'm going to save the sports cards for another video. Uh, there's baseball, basketball, and football cards in here. So all in, I am at uh, just under $80. I think I'm at $79 uh, invested in the stuff that I picked up at this sale, and I think it was well worth the money. Um, so, But you be the judge. When we go through this stuff, you can kind of tell me if I got a good deal on it or if I got hosed. Uh, let's get into the fun stuff and take a look at what I picked up. All right, so here's the comics first. I just went through, there was hundreds of comics there on Saturday when they had the sale. They were $1 a piece. So I picked up a few of them at the $1 price. And that was an issue of Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos, number 142. The Losers, Captain Storm, Johnny Cloud, and Gunner and Sarge. I don't know anything about the losers. I just like the name of it and the cover art was pretty cool. But I figured at a dollar, it's not a bad investment. And I picked up this one. Do You Dare Enter the House of Mystery? I thought this one was great cover art. Um, throwback to 70s style comic. And definitely just an oddball one. It's from DC, obviously, that you don't typically see a whole lot. So I picked those three up on Friday for a buck a piece. And then when I was back today... Um, they had obviously half off everything, so I got them for 50 cents a piece. I liked this one. I didn't realize it at the time. It was a reproduction or a reprint from 1980s-ish. So picked that one up for 50 cents, whatever. It's a loss. Um, this cool sledgehammer, number one. I don't know much about sledgehammer, um, but a number one issue for 50 cents. Thought it was pretty cool. Picked up two Darkhawk issues. Darkhawk number three was Spider-Man. Of course, I had to pick up the Spider-Man. And Darkhawk number six with Captain America. I got an issue of Moon Knight. Moon Knight. I was looking for anything Marvel that had cool cover art, and this one was pretty neat. I picked up six issues of the new Teen Titans. I got number 12, number 26, number 27, number 33, and number 36. Here I had I had to pick up the Cheyenne Kid. 
thought that was kind of cool. Excellent War era. Well, they got Combat Casey, number 28. This one is in pretty bad shape. The front cover and the back cover are disconnected, but they are both still there. So I'm going to kind of put them in one of those boards and bags and uh, keep it together. thought that was a really cool cover art, really cool content in that one. And I got a Combat Kelly, <clears throat> number 37. Picked up a Doc Savage, number 8. Great cover art on that one in the lair of the werewolf and probably my favorite one that i picked up this looks like calvin and Hobbes to me uh, have you have you the nerve to face the unexpected the color the snow red but uh definitely love that one dc the unexpected i think it's from 1970s early early 70s but had to pick that one up at 50 cents and then the last one I picked up was another oddball one. It's The Witching Hour, or it's Midnight, The Witching Hour. Uh, this one has some definite condition issues, but uh, content was too cool to leave it behind for 50 cents. So you'll have to bear with me. I don't know much about patches, or anything about patches for that matter. I just know they look cool. And uh, so I found this pile in the tote, and I think these are all Boy Scout patches. And so correct me if I'm wrong, please let me know what these are. Um, there's a ton of these tomahawk or axe patches in here. Um, quite a few of them. So I'm not sure if they got these every time they chopped the tree down or what they did. Um, but there's a bunch of that. There's a bunch of these types of patches. So I'm not sure if the guy that I, the estate is from is a scout leader. Um, these types of things. Um, some more of those. But... Uh, I know, or my dad knows a guy that is on the Eagle Scout board up in Michigan. So we're going to kind of see if there's any interest in these um, with him. And so some definite cool, looks like the 60s, like late 60s into the 70s. And then um, I found a bag of Girl Scout patches from the 80s. So what I'm thinking is it's a father and daughter collection of patches from their scout days. And so, cool stuff here. Um, I just love the fact that some of these are definitely used, you know. The Sesquicentennial of Illinois, 68, more Boy Scout. But a huge pile of Boy Scout patches. So I just know they look cool. I'm going to try to get in contact with uh, the guy who I know that's involved with the Scout still and see if there's any interest in just kind of taking these. I don't need to sell these. They're cool looking. I would like to have somebody who knows about them or has a respect for them kind of have them and be able to distribute them as they see fit so here's my bag of girl scout patches those are obviously girl scout national Pro program conference girl scouts of usa 1986 some school cool ones in here some girl scouts heads above the rest love it in tune cookie sale <laughs> i mean everybody loves the girl scout cookies these definitely are some pretty awesome uh cookie campaign patches cookies discover the treasures cookies 1990 and i am going to try to find a home for these patches with somebody that loves the scouts or is in contact with the scouts so. and there's a bag of these young american bowling alliance patches a couple of the cooler things i found in there is this babe ruth baseball medal 1995 district champions got a pin for somebody's first communion i feel like that probably should have stayed with the family right well i have it now they had some political campaign stuff this cool nixon stamp pretty neat there uh spark sparky gearkey for national commander 1988 north dakota and then a little uh Re-elect Keegan for U.S. Congress, 3rd District. A couple of these patches. If anybody wants to be a boss, I have your patch. Somebody's going to have to fill me in in the comments about what these are from. Uh, Timber Trails Day 1969. There's a bunch of these patches. Timber Trails Day 1967. Um, Timber Trails District. Spring Campery 1970. That, that might be a scout patch, I'm guessing. Murray Vika Hiking Trail, 12.5 miles. Cool one there. North-South Trail. 
Another Timber Trails Day, 1968. Happy Hollow Resident Camp. And Northwest Cook, and N.W. Cook. Here's a Star Trek. I get, there must be a Scout one. It has the Scout little logo there, doesn't it? So uh, another Scout's patch there. I missed putting that one in the bag. A cool Cave of the Mounds. Blue Mounds, Wisconsin patch. Number, another Timber Trails Day patch. The Land Between the Lakes, TVA. Kentucky Dam Village, State Resort Park. Mark Twain Cave, Hannibal, Missouri. That's a cool patch there. Ken Lake State Park, Kentucky. And the North-South Trail, Land Between the Lakes. Mile Swims. These must be Boy Scouts of America. Yep, I missed that one too. BSA. Got some unique location patches. Got a cool Vermont patch, a little one. We got an Arizona Snowbird patch. Pretty cool one there. Starved Rock State Park. Pretty awesome one there. Jefferson National Expansion Memorial, St. Louis, Missouri. This one's probably my favorite one. The Onondaga Cave State Park Lily Pad Room, Leesburg, Missouri. Got a brand new New York one still in the package. Empire State Building there. Got a cool Hawaii I Love You patch. Got a cool Alaska shoulder patch. And the last one that's in a package is this police department patch. Got an a and &R security agency. Not really sure what that's from. North Star at Tahoe. Pinkerton Security Service. PAX, I'm guessing another security service. Trails End Gourmet Popcorn, 1990 91. We got a Field Museum of National History. I love that patch. I'm going to bring that one to my classroom. And then we have Oswego Land, JC's first annual race, Silver Springs State Park. I'm guessing maybe that's another Boy Scout thing. I'm not sure on that one. USA Volleyball patch. And probably my favorite ones that were in this lot of patches, we have this cool Trojan. And I'm, we have a school near us that has a Trojan mascot. I'm not sure if that's what that's from. That's a really cool patch. Um, feels great. And then my favorite one is the St. Louis Cardinals patch. This one just looks old. Old style um, jersey. It's Obviously the backing is coming off a little bit. But this one just looks super cool. I have a few Cardinals friends, um, but I might bring it to one of my shows and just put it on my table at the show and see if anybody's interested in an old-looking Cardinals patch. Not sure. It could have been worn by Stan Usual. Could have been something else. But uh, super cool Cardinals patch. I know this video doesn't fit the mold of what I usually pick up, but uh, this stuff was just too cool to leave behind. The patches are great looking. They're definitely vintage, late 60s, early 70s. Um, the comic books were great content on them, great cover art. I was able to get some, get some great deals at this estate sale. So, again, I know it's not the, the typical mold for what my videos are, but I had to break the mold a little bit for this stuff. Couldn't leave it behind, especially at the prices that I was getting them at. So, thanks for watching Zach Collect Stuff. Uh, please let me know about those scout patches. If there's anything that um, I didn't clarify or I expressed um, the lack of knowledge of, please fill me in. Um, I would love to learn more about these patches that I have with me. Uh, but until next time, keep collecting and have fun. Talk to you soon.